Hello, faithful friends of the internet. I'm Jason Mayfield, and recently I posted a studio tour. That's right, a, a tour of the entire room where I film YouTube videos. What I did not show you explicitly was the camera and the lighting setup. And so I'm gonna do that today. I wanna walk you through what the camera, the light, and the audio setup look like. Before I do that though, I wanna hop in on a couple of bonus tips. Number one, whenever you film, if you get one of these on Amazon, you just throw this on your door and people will know not to come into your room lest they die. Let's do that now. Tip number two, whenever you're in a situation where you're going to be filming around the room, maybe vlog style, and you've installed the LifeX lights that I showed you in the last video, what you need to do is you need to set up a white balance scene and then you can go into your LifeX app and then click your white balance scene and see how my whole room now is ready for being vlogged in because I got white balance everywhere. And if you need extra brightness, you turn on that overhead light. So now when we get up and move around, we'll be good to go. We'll be able to see everything in the room. Sometimes people like to remind me that YouTube is free and that is not true. Matter of fact, in filming this video, the first time, this is the second attempt, I broke this $900 lens. It's gone, it's no good, it's done. So YouTube, my friend, is not free. It's actually very expensive. It might be free for you to watch, but it is not free for us to make. That being said, before we go any further, I would like to thank all of the people who support this channel over at jasonmayfield.com slash give. So today I'm gonna show you the setup that I use for uh, camera, lighting, and uh, my audio, but I, I want you to know that I'm actually trying some things in the studio right now. I'm trying some different uh, setups than what I normally would. So the, the studio is like in for real use mode. It's kind of crazy right now. Uh, fortunately, I have a camera I can film this on because when I broke this lens, I decided instead of replacing it, I just went ahead and bought myself an A6400, which is a great camera for you to start out with. And I want to start with this. If you are starting YouTube and you're gonna be in a studio mode, I would really recommend the Sony A6400. If you're gonna be moving around and stuff and like vlogging and stuff, I would recommend the Sony A6600. And you may say, why? It all comes down to the battery. The battery on the A6600 is so much better than the battery on the A6400. So if you're watching this and you go, I wanna get in to everything Jason's using, I want you to know if I was doing it today, I would be buying up a 6400s and a 6600s. That's probably how I would be uh, getting started, unless I was buying Panasonic stuff, which is a temptation sometimes. Now, one of the key features to everything that I'm gonna show you in this video is that my studio, as much as possible, is on wheels. I've put as much as I can on wheels. As a matter of fact, uh, everything that's moved around the studio right now, the chair, the ottoman, uh, my desk isn't moved, but it's also on wheels. The camera tripod is on wheels. The lighting stand is on wheels. And I think the only thing that's really not that's critical here is the audio boom, uh, the mic boom, because uh, I just, the, I had it and it's, I like it and it's solid. And frankly, it doesn't need to be on wheels, but if it was, that would be cool. So let's start with the camera rig. Okay, so what we have here is actually two camera rigs. This one, I want you to ignore because this is the one that I'm testing some stuff out with, but you will see some cool stuff here like a slider. Very cool. But this is the camera rig that I use on a regular basis. So the first thing you need to know is this tripod is on a wheel base. So I can move it around the studio at, at wheel. Now we'll work our way up. We're gonna ignore the audio uh, because I do keep the audio on here even though the microphone is on another uh, uh, boom. The reason for that is just so I can monitor audio kind of here with everything. And yes, I like to run external audio. It's super important in my opinion. We're, we're moving up, so these certainly aren't in levels of importance because the camera's on the top. But I have an iPad holder here that is a little overkill, to be honest. You could probably do this with like a magic friction arm for like 15 bucks. But this is on a super clamp. It's working really well for me for where I'm placing everything. So I can go right in to this and then I have an iPad that I can see under the camera. You would not ever wanna use this for a teleprompter situation. 
I have a teleprompter for my phone if I wanted to use it. I used to have one for my iPad, but I wanted something smaller. But this is great for countdown, clock. Uh, sometimes if I want to live stream over here, I'll run a long HDMI cable to my live stream setup and then uh, use the sidecar feature on my iMac and make this a display. And so I can see everything here while I'm still looking at the camera. But uh, having an iPad set up here can be really helpful, especially for keeping your time to a minimum, which anybody who watches my videos knows not, not my strongest suit. That's why this video is seven hours and 16 minutes. I'm gonna take that down so we can actually see. So we're gonna go ahead and move up to the top for a second. You're gonna notice that I have a monitor and my Sony a7 III. And this is a Tamron uh, 28 to 75 lens. I love this lens. I had two of them and one of them is the one that I broke the other day. I do have it on a cage. The reason for the cage, not so much protection, even though I'm thinking more about protection since I broke that lens the other day. But it's not so much for protection, it's actually so I can just mount different things to different places. I have a quick release plate on the side here so I can do vertical video for whenever I want to shoot a TikTok or Instagram story and make it look a little extra. I can do that right here. The other thing that I have is a monitor on here. Now this is a Atomos Ninja V or Atomos Ninja 5, however you prefer to say it. I actually can record to this monitor, which is really important. The Sony a7 III, as a matter of fact, all of the Sony stuff that I'm aware of has one major drawback when you film in 4K. This is only in 4K. And that, am I even filming in 4K? Yes. Yes, I am. When you film in 4K and you use an HDMI out, you lose your automatic face tracking, which is like one of the main reasons you would want to buy a Sony camera. If you're not going to get into Panasonic and you're not going to get into Canon, which both have, I mean, Panasonic has a lot of benefits over Sony, except autofocus. And when you're a first person self shooter, such as I am, I don't necessarily like vlogger in this scenario because I'm, I'm in a studio situation, but I am a first person filmer, a first person videographer. When you're doing that, you need your autofocus just to lock in. That's one of those things that you just won't lock down. Well, when you use an external monitor on the Sony, whether that be so you can make sure, because I have this monitor here so I can actually make sure that I'm in focus, when you want to do that, you lose your face tracking. Well, you don't want to lose your face tracking, except, except there are some settings, and I'll post a video below to show you how to bypass this from Gerald Undone, but when you use the HDMI out to a recorder, you can redeem your face tracking if you record to the external recorder, praise the Lord. So that's what I do. The drawback is my files are humongous because it's recording in ProRes 422. I mean, it's massive. And that's why I like the Sony A6600 and 6400 is because you have a flip up screen. So you can actually self monitor and keep your 4K face tracking. It's a beautiful thing. Now real quick, I'm gonna set all this up and turn it on real quick. It should be pretty easy. I'm not gonna go too crazy here. And it should power up the monitor here. So I got monitor there, I got monitor there. One of the beautiful things here is that I can come out HDMI and get a bigger monitor. So this way for me, cause I'm blind as a bat, hello, I'll be able to see what's going on. So up until this point, you can learn all of this stuff from like 100,000 more YouTube videos could have watched anybody else. They could have shown you everything that I showed you so far, even the wheel thing. There's one thing I do that I've never really seen anyone else do. I don't know why. It's super cheap. It's a super easy fix, especially if you're a first person filmer. Here's the deal. You've probably seen videos where people set up their YouTube stuff and they like, they set the tripod up and they go sit down in a chair and then they have to go adjust the tripod and they sit in a chair and they have to adjust the tripod and they sit in a chair. And they're doing all this adjusting because where they're at, they can't lock in perfectly because they're a first person filmer. Well, I don't know how to pronounce this, but I think it's B-score or best score. There's a little motorized tripod head, costs maybe somewhere between $100 and $200, nothing major. It's this little gray thing right here. And it allows me to pan, hello, and to tilt. So at any moment, if I wanna get perfect in the shot, so this is obviously a jacked up shot right here and I just wanna get my head in the camera and you can see it down here. Watch, I can use, there we go, 
boom, now my head's in the camera. And let's say I want to be off to the side. Bam, now I'm off to the side. What's up, y'all? I'm off to the side. Son. And then obviously, if I don't want that to look good, see here, I've got all of this. Let's turn this a little bit. I've got all of this gap here with my head. And let's say I want this to look a little better. I come down. That actually is a pretty good frame because I've got the camera next to me. But if I wanted to center up, boom, I'm centered up. How about that? This thing is a game changer when you are a first person filmer. So now let's talk about the lighting setup. Not a ton to it. It is also a C stand that is on wheels. I do have this old Dale monitor. I actually use this one because it's scratched. It's connected up with a pole mount for a monitor, so super easy. I did have to manufacture a little bit of friction to keep it to hold in place because it was a little slick. So I basically took some foam and a rug slip and adhesive sprayed the rug slip to the foam on both sides and made me a, a, a thick foam rug slip monitor pole holding apparatus. And then my light, super simple. This is a, a Godox SL60W. <laughs> this thing's only like 150 bucks. I've got this newer uh, diffuser on it. It's like $30 compared to like an Aperture 120D, which you probably see a lot of on uh, YouTube. Those are like $700. Now, if you want a high powered light, a really high powered light, I think the 300D from Aperture, incredible light that you should consider getting. But for most of what we're gonna do, this is probably gonna be enough. A lot of people complain about the fan noise. I'm not super concerned about the fan noise. And to be honest with you, there's enough little noises in my room that I'm always getting little hums and stuff because I've got the pool filter right outside my window. I've got my hard drive, which spins. I've got stuff over there spinning this. So I'm getting a little bit of that anyway. And some of that you just have to live with until you can get yourself into a completely locked down scenario. Which don't get me wrong. I'd love to get into a completely locked down scenario. But this has worked really well for me. I like it. I've got two of these reflecting off the wall in my wife's office for her setup when we start filming in there. So it's a pretty good deal. And you can just get a ton of them. You know, you can get like four of them for the price of a uh, 120D. Also, with this stand that is on wheels, I have a ton of weight down at the bottom. I'm using sandbags. I've got a counterweight on there that really helps. And what I've found is having a one of the, the three legs, having one of the legs under the weight is really, really helpful, which seems like I would have just known that anyway. Then let's talk about the audio. This is a very simple setup. I do have this reflector here just to help a little bit when I'm filming over in this corner. Pull that five and one out occasionally. But this is just a newer C stand. It's all a metal construction. It's very heavy, which is super helpful. And then I have on it, the only thing I have on it is this Deity S Mic 2, which I use to up my audio a little bit. If you were starting today, I would recommend the Rode Video Micro. To be honest with you, I think it's probably the best situation you can get. Um, you could actually put the Rode Video Micro on this Rode Wireless Go and not have any wires on the ground. Just something to think about, but you could do that. But then you got to deal with batteries and stuff. But this is on a grip, but also a ball head. So I have a lot of articulating motion I can do with that. It's basically up and down is how I run it. I just have to move it up and down. And then that comes over here to a Zoom H6, which isn't super expensive. And what I like about it is that it records each individual track individually instead of lumping it together with something else. I've had some other recorders that give you like channel one and two or stereo files. So it's left and right. And then you have to finagle with it in the editor. This instead is just going to give you all of the audio tracks as individual files. It helps a ton with things like podcasts and what may. But if I was doing it today, I would spend a little extra money and I would get the Mix. It's either the Mix 3 Pre or the Mix Pre 3. I think it's a sound devices deal. It's great because it can go under your camera and you can actually see your levels as you're recording. And it's also, I believe, 32-bit recording, which I think means it's really hard to overdrive, which is important for me because I get a little loud. 
But then the big key is I can move this all around the room that I showed you the other day and get all these different shots from all these different places, which sounds fantastic. I wish it was a bigger space. I wish I was in a different space. I'm constantly looking at barns because I'm like, if we just live somewhere with a barn, I could turn a barn into a studio. But in the scenario that we're in right now, it works really, really well. And I'd much rather be in this scenario than the old scenario I was in where I was in the middle of the house all the time and could never film. At least I can come back here and be away from everybody and film. I keep thinking of things as I get moving around. And one of the things that's really important in my room that you should be aware of is the type of quick release plates that I use. So I used to use these really fancy heavy duty quick release plates, which actually just in and of themselves being heavy duty, slow me down. But what I've done is I started to actually move down in the quality of quick release plates I use. I guess it's moving down. They still work great. And the reason is I wanted something small that worked on all of my ball head that I use, uh, all of my little easy ball heads that I use, which all of this will be linked down below. But also I wanted something that was compatible with my Joby Gorillapod ball head so that when I was tossing things on and off of the Joby, because I fancy myself a vlogger, even though I know I'm not, but I want to be able to get things moving quickly in that way. And so quick release plates are a big deal. And if they're cheap enough, you can throw them on everything. So like I've got quick release plates on stuff that aren't even cameras that I can just get up and running super fast to make content. So in the next video, I will be showing you my live stream setup. And then after that, I'll be showing you my overhead rig setup, which I super love. Until then, I'm praying that you continue to experience grace for life through Jesus Christ. I'll see you in the next video.